Hi, welcome back. Okay, so um, so what's the problem with our application now? So it seems like a perfectly good application. We click File, Play. To the file. So let's test it. One, two, three. Plays fantastic. At the end, it also makes sure that it closes. Unless the user clicks play to the file. after play. So let's to test the file. it. One, two, three. So let's test it. When I close the application, everything closes perfectly. But if I click play and then click play again, then it will not close perfectly. By the way, I don't know if I'm going to deal with this, but it's not a perfect closure. Why is it not a perfect closure? That's because... Right? That's because play after play, what does it do? What does it do? Because play always... First of all, invokes co-initialize. So if I click play after play, I invoke co-initialize after co-initialize. But stop is only going to be invoked once, right? I hit play after play. I only have one graph. I only have one set of global variables. So the first play, the second play is going to overrun the values of the variables. A good play should actually see that the variables are not null. For example, if the P graph is not null. So a good play would do the following, would say if P graph is not null, then return. Because it's not designed for play after play, because it's going to overrun the global variables. We don't want to do that, because it's not, it's not, it's not proper. And it should not be happening in any case, because usually the user clicks a uh, menu item, we disable it so that the user will not be able to hit it again. But we'll ignore all of this. This is not a user application architecture set of lectures. We're, we only want to learn direct show. All right, so, excuse me. So back to, back to the problem. So, so is our application perfect or is it still not perfect? All right, so that's actually a good question. It seems to be perfect, but, but really there is at least one problem with it, and that is that this application is using polling in order to learn about the state what if we go, I'm sorry, if we go to the WM timer. This application is using a timer in order to poll the graph and see if there is anything new up with it. And that's not a proper architecture, right? In general, there is two ways of learning about updates in the universe. One way is the polling method, and the second way is the event method. The polling method says that I'm going to write, they always use the telephone as an example. So in my house, I have only one telephone line, but I have two telephones. And there is upstairs my room and downstairs my friend's room. So when my when I'm upstairs in my room and I pick up the phone and I want to make a, a a phone call, so I pick up the phone and uh, I'm, I'm I'm sorry uh, he's on the other line talking to someone. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't mean to to to, to interrupt. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, I didn't mean to bother anyone. And then I'm going to give my friend a couple of minutes and say, okay, it's been long enough. He's probably finished. Let me again pull the line. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, and, and this I would do every time out, I would pull the line and see if, 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 if the line is free, so that I can make my call. And that's one way, that's the polling method of learning about the state of the line, which is the state of the universe. Okay, a second way is like this. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I see that you're on the other line. Uh, please let me know, please yell out when you're finished using the line so that I can also use the line. Alright, you confirm. Alright, great, thank you. Finished. Alright, so this was more 
uh, intricate and involved more language more uh, a bigger investment there is actually a handshake um, it's called a handshake I'm sorry I'm interrupting but please blah, and so on so uh, it, it's more complex but ultimately I can put the phone down and go to sleep I, I don't have to bother myself pulling the line I don't have to bother the two people on the line I don't, I, I'm not uh, reusing the phone I might drop it at one point and break it, it I'm not endangering anyone so the event, the second method is called the event or it's also called the interrupt method and this method says that that when my friend is finished using the line he's going to call out my name and he's gonna let me know that he's finished using the line so then I can go and test the line and then I can go and use the line but guess what by the time I pick it up, ah, oh, my other friend might already have taken the phone before me because they also received the information with me, so they got it before me, and, well, the universe is complex. Nevertheless, the second method is a better, it's supposed to be a better method in general. Right? There's also the problem of resolution, of how accurate are you. If you poll... So it's, it's probably once every minute. But it might be that my friend finished talking a second, a second after I pulled the line, he finished using the line, so by the time I test the line, I missed a whole minute. So we're not getting 100% efficiency or throughput as they call it technically we're not making a hundred we're not making full usage of the line of the phone so it's not as good alright so the timer method is normally used when you want to pull the line when you want to pull your system your subsystem you want to learn about its state using the polling method so you use a timer in general Excuse me. The second method is I'm not going to invest in energy in testing, but rather the subsystem is going to simply let me know when it experiences a change. And that's what we're going to learn next. So with this preface, let's go back to the MSDN all the way back to where we left off which is learning when an event occurs so so learning when an event occurs has little to do if anything with fetching an event out of the queue so what we did up until now is we simply went and tried to get an event if there was no event we got an abort because it came back before the timeout so we know there's no event and if there is an event, ah, oh, we got the event. And in any case, we went and we, we invoked p events get event. We just invoked it. And, uh, and it seemed to work. But, as we said in our analogy to the phone line, it's not as good as what we're going to do next. Why not? Well, because of resolution and because of CPU usage by simply polling this is CPU usage so right now we're running this on a very powerful machine ah, no problem but tomorrow morning this application might run on a very weak machine on some smartphone so CPU is at a uh, is at the premium it's very it's very expensive so it's not uh, obvious that we can just run code whenever we want we might actually be downgrading the performance of the application significantly maybe even significantly first second resolution of accuracy we're, it's, we, 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 we're, we're probably not very accurate the less accurate you are the less CPU intensive you are but then the less accurate you are so you're getting less throughput you're using you're making worse usage of your line so you're going to wait a longer time out after you finished using, after you finished your playback, before you use the subsystem again for anything. 
So if this is a video conference, you might find you might be finding yourselves completing a conversation and waiting some time out before you can make another conversation. Or you hang up and it takes a, a whole second before it's finished and you can do something else. And you say, okay, one second is not that much, but when you use an, uh, a smartphone, you click end conversation, you don't want to wait a whole second before you can do something else. But sometimes that is what I find myself doing and then I, say, I scratch my head and I say, yeah, they probably used polling instead of event-driven programming. Water. I'm sorry. Okay, so again, back to the MSDN. So again, when I first read this, it really was confusing because it all mashed into one big topic, but it's really two separate topics as they separate this here. Retrieving events and learning when an event occurs is two different things. Well, obviously, they're, they're obviously closely related, but they, as you can see, we used retrieving events, and by not knowing when an event occurs, we have still a little problem. And now we would like to completely fix all of our problems. All right, so learning when an event occurs. So to process the actual event and application, okay, needs a way to find out when events are waiting in the queue. The filter graph manager provides two ways to do this. Window notification and event signaling. Window notification, the filter graph manager sends a user-defined Windows message to an application window whenever there is a new event. <laughs> Excuse me. Event signaling, the filter graph manager signals a window event if there are direct show events in the queue. And reset the event if the queue is empty. This event, right, the photograph manager signals a Windows event. A Windows event, right, the word event is being over, uh, uh, it's called overloaded. It's being used in different contexts. V event here means the Windows kernel event. The actual operating system has an event object that is used to signal uh, to signal to threads and the events that are mentioned here are the direct show graph state change event so there you go so the field graph manager signals a window S to signal an event is something very technical it's actually invoking a win32 API function set event or yeah Signals a Windows event if there are direct show events in the queue and reset the event if the queue is empty. Okay. An application can use either technique. Window notification is usually simpler. All right. And what's the downside of being simpler, of using a window notification? So it might be simpler, and I can attest to it being simpler, but the problem is you're making your user interface thread work more meaning it's busy doing multimedia stuff and not really doing user interface stuff so it's going to impact the performance of the user interface experience all right we're out of time we're going to stop here and we'll implement this hopefully in the next lecture thank you very much and we'll see you then